Hello there everyone, and welcome back to Napoleon Total War 3 with this Ottoman campaign. Last time around we had a naval battle in which we seized the Russian trade navy over here at um, this fur post. And that was good, because we definitely need the money. We ended up last turn with going minus 600. Uh, right now the trade navy and the rest of the navy is moving to join with all our ships uh, currently stationed at Malta. Um, I mentioned that the um, British had declared war on us and we have an alarming sight off the coast of Portugal. Now I will report that they have actually been stationary there for I think one or two turns um, so they haven't moved as of yet which is good but these are two full stack British armies on board this which is I was thinking maybe I could isolate and whittle down one full stack I don't know how I would do it against two the Austrians have yet to recruit Capture uh, Croatian Zagreb. Uh, I've turned it to rubble, so most likely it's going to revolt anytime soon, really darn soon. Um, the Austrian Navy has retreated up the Adriatic Sea, so they'll probably at port at um, somewhere near Venice. So if I go after them, I'll have to chase them up through there. Um. Other than that, oh yes, the Russians have kind of mobilized over here, which I didn't think they were going to come through. So they've been, they had one army that marched, I guess, down from Belgrade up there, uh, set fire to Brest Lievstop uh, pastures, and possibly moving down to burn Sevastopol. While a bigger force turned up, uh, they have a unicorn gun. Um, and a few other troops. No general though, but they were marching down towards here to retake Odessa. Um, I had been uh, disbanding a lot of troops in this region as the happiness were rising or basically the resistance to, fo to us was going down. So I was deleting troops out of that just so I could afford with troops uh, in other areas. And that seemed to have backfired because we've got a kind of a sizable force, at least compared to what I have garrisoned there. So I uh, deviated the route of my new uh, um, new model army troops, uh, the light troops there. So I rerouted them to go and defend this against the Russians coming down from over there. I have been trying to sell technologies or just doing technologies but the thing is no one likes me really in Europe the only thing I can kind of uh, get is uh, let's see um, it's Spain Spain are the only one that are actually friendly with me and they've got 29 points um, but I, everyone else is either indifferent or hostile Oh yeah, Mecklenburg as well, for some reason, which I don't exactly know why. Um, why for some reason, but yeah, he uh, that, that happened. Also, I was able to get another guy into the ministers, um, an agrarian, an Yunus Rifat. Uh, so we're actually starting to, it's actually starting to look decent here. It's not as god-awful as it was in the beginning. Um, and with that said, we're going to go ahead and conduct today's battle, which might um, turn into more battles. We're going to cross the river and attack more Russian territories up here. And uh, the armies in numbers, the Russian outnumber me, but they have lots of these uh, garrisoned militia which for once actually has worse morale than us 17 which is really awful especially since we have tons of cavalry so we'll probably just ride them all down 
Anyways, with that said, let's go ahead and take some Russian territory because we desperately need the money. The clever Russians have decided to deploy inside of a village to negate our superiority in cavalry. However, we also have superiority in cannons, and if I have to, I'll race the village to the ground to get the bastards out. But I imagine the AI is going to try the true and tested method of trying to charge us down, which uh, hopefully won't work this time around. Uh, it hasn't. It has kind of worked, but I've been able to um, get around it mostly by cannon and cavalry. Um, yeah, uh, I've deployed all the cannons in the center. Got a nice hill there. Um, we've got uh, some of the janissaries on the right, some on the left. Two cavalry units over here, and one over there. General in the center. And we'll start. So they've even deployed defenses within the town. Well, f first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move away the sappers. So that the cannons are free to fire. And then we want to gain some ground. With the janissaries. And I want to make those lines a little bit thinner. I'm going to make spikes here to protect. And then the cavalry is going to move to slightly better positions. Going to see if we can get the enemy to somewhere in between here. I kind of want them to move on the trap, but then they would get they would get be so close to us that it would be kind of dangerous. So maybe not. But the plan is to have them come at us and. We'll lock them in place with the infantry. And then, oh, you know what? We've got a pretty nice wall we can set up by here. And then, uh, as they're pinned by the infantry or held in place by the infantry, the uh, Russians might very well just go ahead and try to charge through, but. It'll stop them for a little bit, long enough at least for my cavalry to come in through the side and hopefully sweep them away. Looks like the Russians are focusing the force somewhere around here, possibly here. And then from there they're going to move towards us. So these guys are kind of out of line from the rest of the forces and where we're expecting the Russians to attack. So we should probably march close to that. And that kind of puts these two cavalry units way out of line. So we need to move them closer. And then to make sure that these two lines don't break, I'm going to put the general. Put them in the forested area. It should give him a little bit of a defensive bonus from staying in there. So hopefully he doesn't get shot. And then, given well, the Russians could, I kind of don't want to fight them while they're in um, while they're in the city because I want to sweep them away with the cavalry. Right now they're holding this side of the flank, but they're moving on this side. So we got light infantry, two units. Uh, if those are actually allowed to fire on my men. They will break them, and right now they're just running past my troop to outflank it. But here comes my cavalry, and before the enemy is able to open fire, they have been overrun by the uh, cavalry. I'll order the cannons to hold fire, or at least find a new target than these units right here. Same with the line. We don't want them to uh, shoot down our own cavalry. So they started a bit of a firefight over here. We'll order the cannons to open fire once more. And since I don't really want to fight them over there, 
we should pull these guys back to the stone wall over here instead. And let's not... Oh, well, we were already in it. God damn it. Our men are running for I shouldn't have pulled them back. They were too close anyways. That volley by the Obligene massacred or killed loads at least of uh, our cavalry. So now I have no cavalry to aid my troops on the right. We do still have two units. So this one could sweep in like this and this one's coming through the center. Okay, the, the they are reforming. But they'll probably not be ready to attack for quite a while. So I want to move up the lines there to hold the enemy back. And we're going to move up the general as well. Sir, sir, our general is under the enemy cavalry is actually very important that we stop them. So I'm going to target them. These guys are moving against the cavalry and I don't want to throw them in just yet. So we're going to push them back a bit. We're going to push these guys back a bit as well. The enemy seems to want to go through the center. Switch to canister. And prepare to open fire upon the enemy. Oh, that's breaking them down. The Russian line infantry moving up this slope. You know what? It might be time actually. Go in from over there. The canisters are breaking up those guys. Hold fire over here. These guys will now move in. You will move back. Got to tell these guys to open fire. A cavalry lost a lot of men over here, so the Obligene was successful in doing a similar volley against the troops, but in the long run they won't hold. We're sweeping in over there. Oh, why, why did these guys not go into charge speed? Russians faltering ahead of the cavalry. Be able to hopefully go through there, hopefully go through there. These guys are faltering. I want to break the enemy general. It's lots of Ottoman cavalry. The Ottoman infantry will advance towards the center. Together with the cavalry, the cavalry charge is going fine up here. We'll turn this towards uh, the enemy right here. Once they're done here, they should attack here. And quite rapidly, the Russians are falling apart. So far, the enemy hasn't really been able to put up a proper army against us on either front. That's why I'm really worried because, like, if those two British armies come at us, because Britain is one of those top tier nations, that we would have a hell of a hard time dealing with if they decided to attack. Let's go for the enemy general. Let's try to break all of it before uh, any units come back. And since the uh, Russian Dragoons are actually pulling back as we charge into them, I think it's safe to say that we are victorious. I didn't like that that one came back for a little second. It looks like uh, 
The enemy general, though, is holding on really well. And uh, not only that, they don't seem to be losing that many men. Oh, maybe not uh, fire into the men. There goes the uh, enemy commander, Ivan Mied Miedviev, whatever. And there we go, we are victorious. And none of the Obligeni or anything came back, which is good. And there we have victory. So far, I mean, it's worked against garrisons and these smaller armies. But I don't know what we <laughs> what was going to happen when we actually meet the proper Russian army. Because we had quite the difficulty taking down that Pavlovsky guard with Katusov's army. And if you imagine an army mostly comprised of normal infantry units, that would be rather hard to... Uh, deal with those guys. But there we have it. We defeated another garrison and badly needed territory was just uh, came into our control. So we'll be able to get some of that tax revenue that we desperately need. And with that, let's go back to the campaign map. And there we have it. Uh, similar enough uh, troop numbers on both sides. The enemy lost everything, but then again they held. The, they were in garrison, so no surprise there. We lost 400 men. Cavalry in the top together with artillery, no surprise there. Uh, general was awarded 56 kills as well. Um, bit of a shame that we weren't able to get chevrons for the infantry because those guys desperately need that just because they've got so poor morale. Um, we're gonna occupy it. We don't get that much wealth because of that, but we do get a new region that we can tax. And uh, I mean the enemy, the Russians, I don't know where their armies are. I imagine most of it is probably up towards Moscow. So once we get closer to that, maybe then is where we uh, We'll see some problems. Let's see if our spy, Master Spy, can go ahead and infiltrate Kiev. And what do we have here? Alans and more Obligene. Um, I think we will go ahead and end turn, just see if the enemy goes ahead and attacks over there, or if anything en or anything else funky turns up for us. Rebellion in Croatia. No surprise there since I burned the cra crap down. We've got rebels taking control of that. Saxony was destroyed, but then again, Saxony was actually... Everyone was at war with them. So the Prussians, the Austrians and the French, everyone was at war with them. But it seems that the Prussians have taken that. Cobblestone Road, which we have laid towards Russia is uh, now complete all the way up to Moldova. We have a bit of a problem here. Proper sized Russian army has turned up. Uh, we're gonna have some trouble dealing with that. And then also these guys. I, I was kinda lucky because these guys did not um, did not move down to Sevastopol to burn that. That would have been nasty because I definitely need that money. I don't want to put a general in charge of these guys. Just because 600. Um, I guess I'll have to because otherwise there's a. Re I mean, if this is if this turns into a rout. That wouldn't be too nice. But I mean, I mix a little money and I don't really want to spend. We're going to try to repair this and we're going to try and hold it against whatever army come there. Uh, Mikhail 
Borozzo. I kind of recognize the face. I don't know. We haven't faced him before, have we? We'll take Kur. Kur Yusuf Sudiludi. We'll put him in charge. And then a... Um, a uh, very dangerous scenario has turned up. Which is... The British fleet is on the move. And they're now... Here. So it could definitely be that they are heading towards us. I am gathering the entire navy right here. And I'm pretty sure I will be able to gather them before the enemy arrives. The problem is... I mean... So much of my income comes from that. That... I mean, how would I relocate it or... It's a major problem and it would just crash my economy to lose that. So I think we're gonna have to start just saving up everything we make even though we don't make that much. So that's a definite problem. Um, if I can, it would be nice to sink one of the British navies. But I doubt we will be able to take on um, Britain. Um, on the high seas, let alone on land. And I mean, we would have to pull back the forces all the way from the front line to try to deal with them. We have an Austrian force turned up here. So it's uh, not looking great in this, which is going to be... Uh, it was, uh, Britain, the, if Britain attacks, it's basically going to open up a third front. And I, I had already difficulty dealing with two fronts. We were spread thin, we don't have any money. Um, it's uh, bad news all around. But I think we'll go ahead and end this episode right here. Hopefully, I'll be able to still turn this around. And, uh, yeah. Hopefully, as I always say, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And hopefully, I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye.